it's Sam and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm going to be making a card with the new Hive 5 stamps and dies, the Fox costumes before and afters, the honeycomb stencil that's new, the grassy border dies, and the puffy cloud border dies. So let's get to it! I stamped my images onto some uh, Strathmore vellum surface mixed media paper and I'm going to be using Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to color my images as usual. <laughs> I am starting as I always do by spritzing some water onto my craft mat next to where I'm coloring and I take my water brush and I just get it uh, all nice and wet and goopy with all the water, then set it aside to kind of <laughs> loosen up the bristles. I don't know, guys. I have this whole theory in my head. <laughs> but that's what I do. And I set it aside till I need it. Um, and uh, these images are mostly small, so I don't use it too much, but we'll get to that. Anyway, I starting by coloring these sweet little flowers. I knew I was going to color them pink because a lot of this card is going to be yellow with the colored images. So I wanted to break that up and add in some fresh pink. And then I move on to the fox. And instead of using just oranges for the orange section of the fox, I start by using some browns to kind of tone it down or mute the color. Then I go in with my dark orange and my light orange just a little bit, there's a lot of white space left, and I'm using my brush, which I have um, made sure that it is not too wet, not too dry. Uh, you'll see I always test it on my middle finger and my pointer finger. Take uh, a look <laughs> at my pointer finger and middle finger on my left hand, and you'll see as I color the more and more images, uh, you'll see them get more and more streaks of color because when I'm using a color to blend out, for instance, yellow, I also use brown to use my shading. Then I use a mid-yellow and then a light yellow. I, after I blend it, some of the darker color transfers to the tip of the brushes of the lightest colors. So I wipe that off on my fingers. <laughs> I don't even notice that I do it anymore until uh, after I made this card, my husband and kids came home and they said, oh, you must have made a card because your hands have yellow and pink on them. <laughs> they were not wrong. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yes, I use a dark brown or a medium brown, a dark yellow, and then a light yellow. I pull it all out with my water brush. I am when there is space, when the um, images aren't too tiny, I always use a circular motion when I'm coloring. And that kind of helps remove any kind of brush strokes or lines that might be left in uh, coloring your image. Of course, I add blush and little pink cheeks to the fox. And I forget if I show it, but I do end up adding pink cheeks to all of the bees as well <laughs> because they're so cute. I also colored all of the wings on my critters um, with a teal and then a light blue and then I used some water on my brush to pull it out. I thought about adding glitter to my wings and I, at this point I thought, oh well I'll wait till the wings are dry and then I'll add the glitter and then I forgot. <laughs> so there's no glitter on this card. However, pro tip, glitter on wings would be adorable. <laughs> Um, for the gray, I am just using a tiny sliver of black because that is such an intense pigmented color that less is more. <laughs> so use a tiny bit of black and bring it out with the gray. And um, usually I color my speech bubbles in teal. And this time I decided to go green for another pop of color. I figured this would be in the air on my card, so I just wanted to give it a little pop. And those are my images. So now we're going to move on to the background of my card. And as mentioned, you can see the <laughs> uniquely colored fingers on my left hand. 
from coloring. Okay, so I'm going to use distress, distress inks to create the background of my card, which is going to be a sky. I'm starting with Blueprint Sketch, Wilted Violet, Mermaid Lagoon, and Salvage Patina at the bottom. And I just go back and forth over it. I want the background to be really saturated and bright. I want the blending to be smooth and gradiated, gradiated, gradient. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Once it's to my liking, I took a piece of white cardstock, die cut out the grassy border, and now I'm using Distress Inks in Modelon and Twisted Citron to add color to the little strip of grass. Just a tiny bit of Modelon on the bottom to make it darker. And that went really quickly because it's such a small piece and there wasn't a lot of blending. <laughs> this is what the card's eventually going to look like. And that cute little fox is going to be on a strip of acetate that he will allow him to float back and forth like a bee because <laughs> he's with his bee friends. Um, so I'm just going to attach, I'm using a mixture of um, the jumbo glue tube from Lawn Fawn, foam tape, and my tape runner. You'll see throughout this how much I love adhesive. <laughs> I am going to show you how I made the uh, me mechanism move. It's really easy. I am taking a strip of acetate, lining it up in the middle of the card, which is where I want it, and I'm going to take my tiny hole puncher and punch through the top and the bottom at the same time. At this point, the cloud border is already attached to my card, and it allows the hole to line up with my acetate strip and the base of the card. It's attached with foam tape, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It is attached with tape runner. And now I'm gonna take my tiny little brad. I'm putting it through and folding over the backs, but I wanted to leave a lot of space so that the brad wasn't completely flush against the back of the card. So I took an extra piece of foam tape I had lying around and bent the tongs over that. So that gave it a little bit more room to breathe and didn't make the brad so close and flush to the card. Next, I'm going to attach the top layer of my clouds, but I definitely wanna use foam tape so that the swinging acetate mechanism can move. Here I am thinking I'm just gonna put a strip along the top. Luckily, <laughs> I remembered I need room for that Mexican mechanism to go back and forth. So I slide it to the left, add some foam tape, slide it back to the right to make sure it's going to hit all the areas I want and the foam tape doesn't restrict it. And I'm going to take one final piece of foam tape and attach it to the left border of my card um, on the card, on the cloud, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I am going to attach the cloud now. And that gives the uh, acetate arm, we'll call it, <laughs> room on the top and on the sides to swing uninhibited by any foam tape, by any layers, and um, it was really simple, and I think it's such a fun ad. So now I'm just going to attach the little fox guy to the acetate strip, and I'm putting foam tape under that as well. It's temporary. The backing is still on, but I didn't want the glue to seep through to the backside where I had done the ink blending. So I, that's why if, when you saw that foam tape, that's why it was there. And now I'm just going to set up the card and you can see <laughs> I am loving moving it back and forth. <laughs> okay. And then I thought, okay, before I get too far setting up these little bees on the background, let me do the sentiment. So I'm just heat embossing the sentiment from high of five with white embossing powder onto black licorice cardstock. And I'm going to cut that into a strip with a little banner fishtail once it is dry. And then I'm ready to attach it to my card and place my final little bees, my party bees. <laughs> I usually at this point I would use foam tape on the banner and the bees, but since I popped up that entire cloud, the grass is also popped up. I didn't want to make it you know, so thick it wouldn't fit into an envelope. So I'm just attaching this all either with foam tape or the glue pen directly to the card. 
And I had to use <laughs> the B with the little kazoo birthday streamer thing. I had to use the birthday hat. And then I loved this little speech bubble that says buzz because, you know, obviously it's a fox and not a bee. <laughs> but I like that little ad. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So next we're going to move on to the background for that part of the card. I am taking some lost shadow distressing and white embossing paste from Lawn Fawn and mixing it up in my craft mat. And I'm just going to do the borders of my card base because you won't see anything else behind it. I am just doing randomly on along all the sides to give it a honeycomb feel without um, the whole background being honeycomb. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. Once it's dry, you'll see I put more foam tape on the entire panel of the card that we created. More glue on top of that because I don't want this sucker going anywhere. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, going to place it on my the card we made. I use scissors to trim the sides of my card because I like, <laughs> I like a crisp, clean look to, um, like the sides of my cards. And that's the only reason I trimmed the sides to get off the extra, um, embossing paste that ran over the edges. And now you can see this little guy swinging back and forth with his bee friends. So cute. This is my actual card. So I'm going to attach the entire panel to the front. And look at this. Oh, my cat says hello. <laughs> look at this cute little guy. He reminds me of, I don't know, a little five or four year old's school play. <laughs> And it just makes me laugh. I love watching it swing back and forth. And it was so easy to do. So easy to do. And such a fun little impact on the card. Be sure to check out this card on the Lawn Fawn blog. And have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.